Hey, it's Molly. Today on Frosted, we're gonna be making a woodland stump cake. This cake is not for the faint of heart. It requires some time, some patience, but I'm here to help you every step of the way. And together, we're gonna to make something really beautiful. We're gonna start by making our chiffon cake and whipping our egg whites. Chiffon cake is a light, rich, tasty cake that gets its airy texture from the combination of whipped egg whites and cake flour. We used a vanilla bean for extra flavor. Here we are, we've got our batter divided evenly on two of these sheet trays that I've buttered and parchment and buttered again. Then just take your offset here and spread the batter all the way to the edges of the pan. It already feels very spongy, which is exactly how we want it to feel. Give it a little tap. Throw these guys into the oven until they spring back to the touch and nice and golden brown. The way we cool these cakes is very unique and very important. You're gonna start with a cloth and then you are going to liberally sprinkle it with powdered sugar. The reason why we do it this way is because we wanna create a rolled shape that's gonna hold and not tear once it's cool. I'm going to take just my handy offset spatula, run it through the sides. You're gonna tilt this over and as slow as possible, dump this down. Okay, peel our parchment off. So you can see it's like really nice and springy here and we're going to put some more powdered sugar on here just to ensure it doesn't stick to itself. Don't be afraid of these rolled cakes. They're intimidating, but they really aren't so bad and they're quite forgiving. So start by coiling up our rag and gently rolling our cake with the cloth. Tuck those nice edges under. Repeat with your second cake and let cool like this, just like a little baby. While our cakes are cooling, I'm gonna make our very simple, very delicious filling, which is just a chocolate hazelnut whipped cream. While the rest of our cream is whipping, we're gonna just take a little bit that we held over and pour it into our hazelnut chocolate spread here and just whisk this until it's nice and incorporated. So we've got our cream whipped to stiff peaks here and we're gonna add our hazelnut chocolate cream right into it and just mix this till it's well combined. Okay, get this into the fridge just while we cut our cake layers and then we assemble this and then we start decorating. 40 minutes later, it's nice and cool to the touch. You can feel it and now we're gonna unroll it and you'll see why it was important that we rolled it when it was warm and that's so that the cake doesn't rip when you unroll it later. Because we're gonna shape this cake into a tree stump, we want it to be able to roll around itself without breaking. And you can see here that even though this cake is really light and fluffy, it's very spongy, it has a nice elasticity to it, which is great because we're gonna need it to be forgiven here. We're gonna use a ruler here and we're going to divide this into thirds I like to score this first in case I make a mistake. This is one of those moments where you do want this to be as even as possible. This cake takes a lot of time, it has a lot of steps, but it is so impressive that it's worth it. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with our next roll. So we have our cake layers here, they're all cut, they're all the same size, same shape, and you can see here that they have a nice elasticity to them. And now we're gonna start assembling our tree trunk. So I've got one of my cake layers here. We're gonna put about a cup of our filling here. Use our nice offset spatula and cover this nicely, as even as possible here. Don't worry if this gets a little messy. It's all gonna be beautiful in the end. So roll this cake up. Okay, so this is the beginning of our tree trunk. So you can see that that's really sturdy, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the other ones right around it. So we've just finished wrapping our cake. It is nice and tight and coiled and so cool, and now we are gonna take the rest of our whipped cream and cover this cake, get it in the fridge while we work on our modeling chocolate.
Modeling chocolate is what we're gonna use to drape over this cake to look like a tree trunk. Modeling chocolate is kind of like a candy clay. It's made by melting chocolate and combining it with corn syrup. We're gonna let it harden, then knead it, roll it out, and cover our cake with it. We are also gonna do the same thing with some white chocolate. This is gonna be the top of our cake. This is what it looks like after a few hours of setting, so you can see here that it's like Play-Doh, and we have to work quickly because it is temperamental. So you've got some powdered sugar here, and you're gonna use this like flour and just cover your work surface. I'm gonna put some more on top. Then we're also gonna take our rolling pin, cover that with powdered sugar, and we're gonna roll this out to about 11 inches in diameter. Keep moving your circles so that you know it's not getting stuck. Okay, we're good here. We've got an 11 inch circle-ish. It's okay if the edges are slightly shattered because we're gonna end up trimming them anyway. Just like a pie crust here, you're gonna just roll it over your rolling pin. If it's cracking a little bit, that's okay. Pinch it together. Again, we are mimicking nature here, so everything is gonna be slightly different. Okay, so just kind of tighten it as you roll around it. Okay, great. Slide your cake in, and then we're gonna carefully roll this over the top. And we only need it to cover the very top, so if it rips, it rips. Just press it down nicely, and it's gonna come off just on its own, so just go ahead and rip it. Okay, you can just kind of press it down the sides here. So next we're gonna work with our dark chocolate. Divide it in four and work with just a quarter of it at a time. And you're gonna just knead it in between your hands. Use cocoa powder this time instead of powdered sugar. And knead it in your hands until it's really nice and pliable. And we're gonna roll this out to a rectangle that's about six by eight inches. So make sure you're liberal here because you don't want it sticking anywhere. Okay, so this looks good. We're at the right size here. We're gonna just make sure that we don't have any stickiness happening. Now is where we're going to kind of get creative and do our design to make it look as much like bark as possible. So I have some natural bark here that I got in Central Park, and we're just looking to see the dimensions here, the kind of shapes that they have there. If you choose to use natural bark as a stamp, make sure that you scrub it clean, bake it in the oven, dry it out, kill all that bacteria so it's safe to use. And you can also use like the back of a knife, make some grooves, draw some lines here. This is looking good to me. I'm gonna add some cocoa powder really get this looking nice and natural. So I've got my first piece here, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other three pieces that I have, and then I'm gonna show you how to assemble the cake, put the final touches on. We're gonna work with one rectangle of bark. We're gonna trim the edge just a little bit, carefully lift and fold it around the side of the cake. It's totally fine if there's some breakage. Right now we just wanna make sure that it adheres to the cake. And this is when you can start to kind of use other pieces, press down to combine. And again, we're gonna cover all this up too, so right now just make sure that it's sticking to the cake. All of these imperfections are exactly what make this cake unique and special and very realistic. Okay guys, our bark is done. We're going to make some rings in this tree stump. Start by just adding some cocoa powder to a little bit of water and then giving it a mix with a pastry brush to create a nice little paint. Just as a test run, you wanna take your brush and rub it on a paper towel to see if you're getting the right texture. So now we've gotten like a nice little paint happening and we're just gonna kind of brush around and get that nice, wood grain look here. Next, we're gonna adorn this cake with some meringue mushrooms, some ground pistachios that we're gonna use as moss, and really finish this woodland stump up. I'm gonna use some corn syrup here as glue. Just pick a few areas. We're using Sicilian pistachios because of their really bright, vibrant color here. Just let things fall where they may for now and we can clean up at the end. I also have some really fun meringue mushrooms here. I'm gonna brush with some cocoa powder 
just give them that natural effect. Use a little bit of corn syrup as glue, and then just stick them around. And we're gonna do this on the top and the sides of the cake. Forest with our beautiful woodland stump cake. It was a labor of love, but absolutely worth it.